18 apples, take one. I was approached while I was in post-production for War for the Planet of the Apes. And when I was first contacted by Warner Brothers, I didn't understand what the meeting was for. So I kept turning it down. And then finally, my agent called me one day and he said, listen, that general meeting with Warner Brothers, it's not a general meeting. It's about Batman. I was just starting Christopher Nolan's movie, Tenet. And then two days later, we'd have to come back to do the Batman screen test. Yeah, it was like a super high pressure scenario. You know, auditions are always, they're strange and they're scary and you're nervous. They have a proper camera, but it's cool because you kind of get a taste of what it will really be like on set. Yeah, they gave me a motorcycle helmet and I had to take the helmet off, which was my biggest fear was like, I'm gonna get stuck with the helmet. And I was like, that's how I lose this job. But Rob was half in a bat suit. It was like this kind of like in between worlds. Like we were almost there, but not quite. I mean, it's ter the whole thing is terrifying. I mean, I was putting on the suit from Batman Forever, and for one thing, it's the suit is pretty old. It's been in storage for a while. It's also incredibly precious. If I even slightly exert myself, I'm pouring sweat. And also just to try and figure out how to, how to project a performance through a mask, basically, is kind of, you realize pretty quickly that this is way harder than a normal part. One of the things that distinguishes Batman as a comic superhero relative to most of the others is Gotham. That's very recognizable, obviously styled off largely New York. And so he's grounded in a way that's kind of uniquely relatable. Matt was very, very clear saying he wanted to make this. This is a detective story, but right from the beginning, and so you think, okay, so he's the greatest detective in the world. What makes a good detective? Someone who just is exceptionally observant. I always think of filmmaking as a kind of, you're going on a search, and you're searching for the things that stick with you. On this movie, what started the process was I just started reading comic books. I went back to 1939, and you know, all, I just basically did a deep dive in the comics, and anything connected, I just wrote down. Basically, what the notebook is for me is a way to have a dialogue with myself, because otherwise I would just be saying these things and then I wouldn't remember anything. But if I write it down and then I keep revisiting it, I start having a kind of document that shows what I'm interested in and what things you know, sort of struck a chord with me. And eventually, a story starts to emerge. I gave Bruce a notebook as well because I felt that he needed to have that kind of dialogue with himself. And I thought, wow, this is so Batman. Matt gave us a sort of idea that he'd like him to be a bit like Kurt Cobain. So from that, I looked at lots of different images of Kurt Cobain and, and what the crossover was, who he becomes when he takes his cowl off. And the whole Kurt Cobain uh, black eye makeup sort of really struck me. and. I liked the idea that he had the remains of his Batman makeup on and it looked very rock and roll. He spends a lot of time in darkness. That long hair really helped with creating that side of his character. At one stage we were talking about shaving all his hair off and um, I'm glad we didn't go down that road. There's a film by Gus Van Sant called Last Days, which is kind of a fictionalized account of the last days of Kurt Cobain. And he's got all his stuff spread all over it. And I thought, well, this is the version of Batman and Bruce Wayne that I understand. I knew where he was coming from in this kind of slightly nihilistic. Do you know who I am? You're Bruce Wayne. I want to see Carmine fuck on. There's something more emotional and doesn't necessarily know that he's going to save the day. He doesn't know if being Batman is going to work or do anything. He knows that there is no other option. Basically, the options are kind of death or being Batman. This is the fifth movie that Michael Giacchino and I have done. That, to me, is a very exciting collaboration. I love working with him. The night before Rob was to screen test, he sent me a secret little MP4. It was both Bruce's theme and Batman's theme in this incredible suite. And I was blown away, it was so emotional. I drove to the set that morning and Dylan 
Clark, my producing partner who was in this from the beginning with me, we're like brothers. I said, you have to get in the car. I said, what do you mean? So just get in the car. And we sat in his car. I was in his passenger seat and I didn't know what I was gonna listen to. He goes, listen to this. And he pressed play and you know, the, the, and it's, the, it's Batman's theme. I played it as Rob was putting that makeup on his eyes, and I was like, this is in the movie. We're doing this. That's where that scene comes from. It literally came out of Rob's audition. <laughs> okay, good, cut. It was one of those things where I just felt like this was a very special, faded day. <laughs> but there we were listening to the music, knowing that he was gonna put on this bat suit that was part of the history of Batman. It was just one of these things where you suddenly felt you were in a long line of history that meant so much.